The next group of medications that we're going to look at for the treatment of constipation is the group called the stimulant laxatives. The stimulant laxatives include bisacodyl, sodium picosulfate, senna, and castor oil. Here we're going to concentrate mainly on bisacodyl and sodium picosulfate, but what we learn here will pretty much apply to all of the stimulant laxatives. As a very broad overview, the stimulant laxatives act like an irritant to the gastrointestinal tract to increase the movement in the GIT and to increase the secretions into the GIT. The increased movement also allows less time for reabsorption of fluids, so overall there's more fluid in the fecal matter and that makes it easier to excrete. One of the first things that you should aim to have in your mind about the stimulant laxatives is the very short list of reasons why you would choose the stimulant laxatives over another type of laxative. Because the stimulant laxatives are some of the strongest and most effective laxatives, but they also come along with many more side effects, especially if they're used on a regular basis. So the first thing that you should keep in mind is that their use should be restricted to the occasional infrequent use when nothing else is working for the constipation or when the bowel is being prepared for a colonoscopy or other medical procedure. So what types of side effects are associated with the stimulant laxatives? First of all, the stimulant laxatives often come along with a strong rebound constipation. Now this type of rebound activity often happens in the body in response to medications. Recall that a person taking antacids would have a strong rebound hyperacidity. In the case of stimulant laxatives like bisacodyl and sodium picosulfate, the person taking the stimulant laxative will have that strong rebound constipation. The reason for that rebound effect due to the stimulant laxatives appears to be that the smooth muscle cells in the intestines pretty much adapt to that strong stimulation and then they start needing that degree of stimulation so the inherent movement of the GIT decreases dramatically. Another side effect of stimulant laxatives occurs with prolonged use as it can damage the colon, making it less able to move the feces through the colon on their own. And that is a permanent effect when that happens. And finally, the stimulant laxatives are associated with severe electrolyte abnormalities in many cases. So reflect on all that for just a minute. Stimulant laxatives result in a rebound constipation that makes the person think they need more, and then when they use it for long periods of time, the stimulant laxatives damage the colon to the point where the person is not able to move the feces through the colon on their own. So it's really important that the stimulant laxatives are only used infrequently despite the fact that the marketing on many of them claims to have gentle effects. And from that, a lot of people pretty much assume that they're completely safe. Sodium picosulfate is what we term a prodrug, which means that it needs to get metabolized into the active form. And normally, metabolism of drugs occurs at the liver but sodium picosulfate doesn't get absorbed. So how is that possible? How is it a prodrug? What metabolizes the sodium picosulfate? Well, the sodium picosulfate is metabolized to the active form by the intestinal bacteria. Sodium picosulfate is often combined with an osmotic laxative and is the preferred combination for bowel cleansing prior to colonoscopy and GIT imaging studies. Bisacodyl is another stimulant laxative which has some additional side effects. For instance, bisacodyl can result in a mild proctitis, so an inflammation of the inner rectum with sloughing of the rectal mucosa. 
Let's challenge ourselves again, applying the information we just learned to help develop our problem solving skills and to make understanding and remembering the information a lot easier. Most stimulant laxatives are able to be administered orally, rectally, or administered by enema. But there's one that is effective only if it's taken orally. So using the information that we just learned about the stimulant laxatives, which of the following would you predict would only be effective if it's taken orally? Bisacodyl, the sodium picosulfate, senna, or castor oil. And you were correct if you predicted that the sodium picosulfate was only effective if taken orally. Recall that the sodium picosulfate is a prodrug, and that changes to the active drug by the intestinal bacteria. So the only way that sodium picosulfate will be in the presence of bacteria long enough to be changed to the active form will be as if it's taken orally. Stimulant laxatives normally work in about 6 to 15 hours if they're taken orally. They work in about 15 to 60 minutes if they're taken by suppository, and they work in just 5 to 15 minutes if they're administered in a enema preparation. But remember, the sodium picosulfate is only going to be effective if it's taken orally. The oral preparations of stimulant laxatives are normally enteric coated. The enteric coating is placed on medications that are irritating to the stomach or for some other reason they need to be dissolved in the small intestine rather than in the stomach. When a medication is enteric coated, it should definitely not be chewed. It needs to be swallowed whole so that it gets all the way down to the intestines without dissolving in the stomach first.